Well, it's Friday and welcome back to the shop. So as promised, there it is. The uh, 289 has been totally rebuilt. Uh, obviously new pistons, new rings, new valves, new valve springs, new push rods, uh, new, high, new, new lifters, everything. So like I said, all ready to go, just needs to be uh, assembled. So I'll take care of that next week. I've finished all prepping all the parts, right? So I've cleaned the oil pan, I cleaned the uh, cam covers and things like that. And, uh, you know, timing chain cover. So that's all ready to bolt on. But before we get to that, the challenge du jour, the challenge of the day is I am converting this car from an automatic transmission, which means I need to buy the appropriate parts like the flywheel and the bell housing and the clutch and the throw out bearings and the pilot bearings. All of that didn't exist with an automatic transmission. So not only do I need to convert this to a, a manual transmission, I have to make sure the modern T5 in the back works, of course, with the um, the original design with a Z-bar because the way the Z-bar clutch works is that the Z-bar clutch actually pushes when you depress the clutch pedal. The Z-bar pivots and it pushes. All modern cars pull the clutch fork and so the pivot point is actually right there. You can see there's a little bit of there's a hole there and what that is for is, is that's where the pin goes in where the clutch fork would normally pivot on. Well they sell a kit that allows me to modify a modern bell housing so that the pivot point is actually now on the side where the clutch fork goes in because I need to pivot there so I push on the throw out bearing. So this ought to be interesting. Uh, but before I get going, if anybody's doing this and they need to know which parts fit because it took me a long time to find out what bell housing, what throw out bearings, what pilot bearings, what clutch system, uh, all of that, uh, I have those parts if you need it, just let me know and I'll put them up. But basically, let's get at it. So as I mentioned earlier, so this is a clutch fork for a standard 1968 Mustang 289-302 small block um, manual transmission, right? So this is the clutch fork for it. Now the throw bearing. Now the throw bearing is probably the same, but basically the kit that I bought, which is the uh, clutch pressure plate, the clutch friction disc, um, pilot bearing and all of that, I had to do the research, right? I had to find out, make sure that clutch would go to the flywheel. That flywheel I bought had to make sure it marries to the um, uh, crankshaft, right? So I have to make sure all of that is good. So the idea is, is, you know, you have to make sure all of those parts are right so that this will marry together. But basically the way this works is the throw out bearing then, or the, the clutch fork goes into the um, bell housing, the throw out bearing goes in and then of course it just locks on and that moves forward, right? So very simple. The challenge is that the modern bell housing, actually the pivot point is normally here. The clutch fork would come across, pivot here, because the way modern cars work is there's usually a cable, a clutch cable that goes into this hole here, connects onto the clutch fork and pulls it. And if it's gonna pull it, it needs to then have a fulcrum out here so that it then moves the throw bearing forward as you pull. With the 68, the challenge is the Z-bar pushes. So it pushes against the clutch fork. So in order to have then the clutch fork pushed on and have this move forward, this throw up, or this clutch fork has got to pivot on this side. And you can see now with the motion of my hand, if I take my arm and I move it away, pushing it towards that way, it actually now moves the throw up bearing towards the diaphragm, which will then disengage the clutch for me. So basically that is the operation I need, which means I need to put a pivot on this side. But of course that pivot doesn't exist with this modern bell housing. So what they do is they sell a kit to convert this to the pivot. So as I said, you buy the kit, the kit comes with all the parts you need to create that pin so that you have the fulcrum on the right hand side. Now, there's a couple of approaches. Now, my approach I found was less expensive. Why is that? Aftermarket bell housing like this, they're cheap, $185, $200 from JEGS. Um, you want to get a 68 bell housing, you know, you're five, six hundred dollars Now, remember, I'm converting automatic, so I didn't have a bell housing. I needed to find a bell housing. So, by going with a modern bell housing, uh, I save money on the bell housing. Number two, if you have an original 68 Mustang and you want to bolt 
a T5 to it, you have to buy an adapter plate, and that's $180 on its own just for the adapter plate. So I found if I spent, you know, $200 on the bell housing and then, you know, $54 on this uh, Fulcrum conversion kit, I was a much further ahead. Also, too, I get a modern bell housing. I can paint it any way I want, you know, so like I said. Um, but basically, the instructions, what they say to do is to draw a line one inch into the... Um, one inch in into the uh, opening. This way here I'm going to align the block to that, I'm going to lock the block down, and then I'm going to put in the uh, raw, uh, the, um, the throw it arm, and uh, we'll check it out. Okay, so as you can see what I've done is, is I have the um, I have a pair of vice grips that is simply holding the block in place. These nuts that you see here aren't pulled through, they're not coming through the uh, bell housing, they're just to hold all this aligned. So now this goes in, so it uh, obviously goes in and there is a spring on the back, so excuse me for getting up in front of you. But that spring's got to go through the pinpoint. Oh, there it goes. Sorry, didn't mean to get up in front of you. Okay, so now we're sitting on it. You can see the spring, what it does is it returns it. This is now sitting in that groove. And there we go. Now, let's test fit it with the throat bearing. We'll make sure that when this is fully open that the throat bearing is still on these pins. I may have to move it in further. And again, that's why it's a test fit, right? This is one inch in. Um, and if that's not enough, we'll move it in an inch and a quarter. And we'll just get this until the point where we know it's right. We'll mark the holes and drill it. So it's a fairly straightforward process. Let me put this back together and let's take a look at it. Okay, so we have the clutch fork onto the throw out bearing. It's sitting in our pivot here, like it's locked into the pivot. This is one inch in, as I mentioned. And if I put a little bit of pressure on the throw out bearing, and then I apply pressure to the uh, clutch fork, you can see it moves the clutch forward, or the uh, throw out bearing forward. So this is exactly what we want to see, right? So I'm going to step on the clutch, that's going to push this in, that's going to move that forward. That's going to disengage the clutch. I let the clutch go. Throw out bearing pops back. Diaphragm um, opens and clutch clamps down. And we got ourselves a converted transmission. So I'm, uh, I'm in good shape here. I think what I'm going to do now is, is I'm just going to take, as I said, some measurements, make sure all this looks good. But basically, you know, I'm going to pretty well wait until the engine's together. And then I'm going to obviously bolt the flywheel to the block. And then I'm going to put the clutch pack onto the block. And then I'm going to mount the transmission to the, um, to the uh, engine. Uh, but first, if this is good, and I like the travel, so the way this works now is, is this travels to the end of the fork. I mean, this is not going to overextend. It can't. So that's right in the sweet spot. So in all honesty, I am going to mark the block. I'm going to mark the holes. I'm going to drill it. Now I'm going to permanently install the uh, block here onto this bell housing. Okay, so as you see, I had marked where the block goes. I had verified that the clearance, I liked it, that the gap in here was proper. So I drilled the two holes. Now these two holes I drilled from the inside. What I'm going to do is remove the bell housing because what they've done is the bolts they give me are chamfered. So I'm going to remove the bell housing and then from this side, I'm going to use a larger bit so that I can actually chamfer the um, hole and that way that this will sit flush and then the bolts bolt on the inside here. It won't interfere with the uh, throw out fork. And then from this side, it'll be nice and flush on the outside and there won't be any uh, interference. I don't have to worry about anything or catching on something there and this will all be internal. So I'm just going to remove the bell housing and drill that out. So I just stepped out of focus. So here's the bell housing. Here are the two holes that I've just drilled through. You find a drill bit that is the same thickness as the outside part of the uh, screw and then all you do is you drill into the bell housing to create that bit of a chamfer. You don't want to go too deep but you want that to be able to sit down inside of that hole. So I'm just going to get a little deeper.
And there we go. I mean, that's close enough. I mean, you know, in order to get this chamfered perfectly, I'd have to get in here with a, a special bit. I don't have one of those. But once I uh, squeeze this down, that'll press into the aluminum and then that'll disappear and become flush. So I'm just going to put this back on and we'll put the plate in. We'll give it one last test. So the um, bolts on the back now are, are pretty flush. I mean, I don't want to go too deep because the metal, the aluminum is only a certain thickness and I don't want to drill it too deep. So I mean, that's flush enough. The transmission is here. There's nothing in the touch that. So, I mean, that's flush enough. But inside what we've got now is we have our spacer and we have our, um, our, our pivot point, right? And that's all bolted and tightened in. What I'm going to do now is put the bell housing back on. I'll put the throw it arm back in, uh, the clutch fork back in, and the throw it bearing, and we'll give it one last test. Okay, bell housing is back on the, the transmission. That uh, extension block that offers me this new fulcrum point is permanently bolted into the bell housing. So now if I have to take the transmission off or the bell housing off, I don't have to worry about that block. It's there permanently. There is a spring on the um, clutch fork, which locks into that pin or that uh, fulcrum in the back. So that now gives me that, you know, if I push into the fork or I can push back out here, you can see they both work. So I think we're done. So that's enough work for a Friday. I'm going to go put my feet up. Uh, this weekend, I'll probably put the engine back together. Uh, I've got all the parts for it, so I'm going to put the engine back together. And of course, I'll describe what we've done to the motor as I'm doing that. Uh, hopefully, by Monday or Tuesday, we can marry the transmission to the engine. And that way there, we'll have that one piece and we'll put it back in the car. Now, the reason that's important is I don't have a transmission mount yet. And the reason I didn't is because Barry over at Joe Daddy's Garage ran into exactly the same problem with a conversion, right? If you're moving to a different transmission, they make different transmission mounts. But there are variations in those mounts, and it really comes down to almost what month the car was made in. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to obviously go get it all installed, jack the rear end of the transmission up, make sure it, of course, comes through the where it's supposed to, make sure the shifter handle comes through where it's supposed to, and then once I'm satisfied, then we'll figure out what uh, transmission mount I need, whether or not I can buy an aftermarket one or whether or not I'm actually going to have to make one. So I think that's it for today. Like I said, everybody have a great weekend. I will see you next week when I put this together. Um, bye from the shop.